Hi everybody, in this video we're going to learn about variables and variables are one of the things that once you learn about them it will completely change your life. Alright, let's see how. So the best way to learn about variables is by learning about its slightly evil cousin known as values. And here's what's important. In JavaScript, every piece of data that you provide or use is considered to contain a value. For example, we saw the alert statement and the words hello world. Now, this is pretty straightforward. We have an alert function, some text, and for to run this application, a little dialog would appear with the words hello world. See, to us, the words hello world is just some text. Some text that you pass in the alert function, the alert function runs, you see some dialog with the text that you passed in on the screen. To JavaScript, it's not just some text. It's more formally known as what's known as a value. And in JavaScript, everything you do is a value. Everything you touch, everything you might poke at, everything you might throw something at, it's all values. And there's a reason why it's important. Because values are so commonly used in JavaScript, there are, there are several things you need to do to simplify your life working with them. And that is, you need to be able to easily identify them and you need to be able to reuse them through your application without duplicating the value itself multiple times. So for example, let me go back to my code here. I have the values, I have the value hello world. Let's say I wanna you know, have a few more alert statements. I do not recommend you do this because you're gonna have four or five dialogues coming up, but let's say I wanna just duplicate this. So now the words hello world, and what this means is my application runs, I'll see five dialogue boxes, each one displaying the words hello world. Now, let's say that I want to make a change to text I want to display. Instead of just typing in hello world, let's say I actually want to say it, hello everybody, for example. I'm going to change the word to hello everybody. And then for every instance, this particular value is currently used in my code, I'm going to go in and manually change everything to the new phrase that I want. Now, for a simple example like this, you can already see it's a little annoying. Now imagine you have a more complex application, something with a lot more things going on, you'll be hard pressed to easily find everywhere your value is being used. And oftentimes you might miss some areas where values are used and you didn't even notice them. So there's a solution to all of this. Because we wanna be able to easily identify the values as they're used throughout your code, and because we wanna be able to reuse them, not in the way I showed you earlier, but without duplicating them, you have an answer. And that answer is in the form of what are known as variables. So let me go back to the code and let's take a look at how variables can actually help solve some of these, some of these problems. So the first thing to do to use a variable is you need to declare them. See, a variable is very simply an identifier. It is simply a name you give to something that ends up pointing to an actual value. So let's get started with this. So to declare a variable, the first thing you need is the keywords var. These are some words that, these are some letters that when typed, indicate to JavaScript that what you're about to do is declare a variable. So I have the var text, and what I'm gonna do next is specify the name of the variable that I want. The name I want is my text. Done. So what I've just done is created a variable, and this variable is called my text. So simply declaring a variable is not enough. All you've really said is that there is a name, it is called my text. That's it. What is my text actually referring to? That is the second part of working with variables. Declaring them is the first part, which you've already done. Initializing them is the second part. That's where you assign it a particular value itself. So I'm going to go ahead and initialize the my text variable to the value hello world. And at this point, I'm going to replace every instance of hello everybody with the words my text. And this is a one-time thing where since I replace it, every single time my application runs now, I can refer to my text wherever I want to refer to the words hello world. So this means that right now for this application, you'll see five instances of the alert statement appearing. Let's just go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and preview this. You see hello world, first instance, second instance, third, fourth, and fifth. Great. Let us never do that again. I'm going to go ahead and delete about two of them. Okay, great. So now let's say that I have my text hello world. Let's go ahead and remove this, change it to something else. Let's say instead of saying the words hello world, I want to say the words, the dog ate my homework, which 
which is the most clever thing I could come up with at the moment. The dog ate my homework. Now, all you need to do is make this one change to this one declaration of the my text variable. In my code, wherever my text is being used, the new value will just kick in. So we're at the previous page right now. Notice that the dog ate my homework. It's the alert statement that you see twice because we have two alert statements. But I didn't have to go and make multiple copies of the value that dog ate my homework. And not duplicating things is a great way to reduce unwanted errors. So that's a very simple view of what variables are. Now there's more things you need to keep in mind when it comes to variables though. So variables are very unique in how they can be named. So your variables can be as long or as short as you want. They can be one character long or they can be thousands and thousands of characters in length. JavaScript doesn't care. As long as you give it a valid name that is short, at least one character, you're totally good. And your variables can start with a letter, an underscore, or the dollar sign character. They can, that seems kind of bizarre, right? The only thing is, they can't start with a number. You can't have a variable that starts with a number. Don't ask me why, it's just how the world is. Now second, or third, outside of the first character though, your variables can be made of any combinations of letters, underscores, numbers, and dollar sign characters. So what is in the number two is that your variables can't start Sorry, your variables can't start with a number. They can start with a letter, underscore, dollar sign character. But once you're in the body of the variable itself, you it's pretty much a free for all. You can do whatever you want as long as you just don't do what's in the number four, as long as you don't use spaces. So, so just to give you an idea of what this all looks like, some of the variable, some of the names, the variables you can do, and go delete everything else. You can basically have something like, you know, var my tech, which I just had earlier. You can have something that's a dollar sign only. Bizarre, but totally doable. Var R8, you know, letter and a number. Var underscore counter, you know, I'm starting with an underscore. You know, very common way of naming things. So another version, var dollar field. And you kind of get the picture. You know, let me just copy and paste some other examples in just so you have some other things to look at. And, and notice that you also have this is a really long variable name and underscore could be longer. So some examples, all of these are valid variable names. How about that? And if you ever are in doubt as to whether a name can be valid or not, there's a, there's a website, motherf.in slash JS variables, that is basically a name validator. You can type in a name of a variable and it'll tell you if the variable is valid or not. For example, underscore dollar sign ABC, totally valid, my text, valid and you can tell because of the of the green colors in the background and of course like I said spaces aren't allowed so if I do foo space arg nope doesn't work and of course the question is probably the most pressing in your mind is Kesha's name a uh, valid variable name ke dollar sign ha uh, yes Kesha the singer her name is a valid variable cool so just some more things to you know look into before we wrap it up for the day is that in earlier I had var my text and I had the text and the variable declared directly as part of the variable declaration. So, so the initialization and declaration were done on the exact same, same line, the same statement. So oftentimes though, you probably won't always do this. You actually have, you can actually break up your variable declaration and initialization to separate lines. So var my text is the declaration. I'm saying it equals hello world. And the end result is if I were to have my alert statement printing out the value of my text, the result is that the text hello world will show up because it doesn't matter that the declaration and initialization are in two separate lines. As long as your variable is initialized, you're in good shape. And the last thing is that JavaScript is actually very flexible in what values can be assigned to a variable. In other languages, you might have to specify that my variable will only store some text or my variable will only store some numbers. In JavaScript, it doesn't care. It's very friendly like that. So for example, I can say my text actually equals a number, 99, or it can also equal a mathematical expression, four times 10. If for kicks, I just want to see what the value looks like, as you can imagine, four times 10 is 40. And if I were to test what my application does, I preview it, you see the value 40 showing up on the screen. It doesn't matter that my text was initially initialized to some text value or a static number, 
the last value always wins. So before the alert statement, the last value of my text is the result of evaluating four times 10. So that's uh, one of those things that can cause you great happiness or great grief when working with JavaScript. So with that, I think we are almost towards the end of this particular session. So if you wanna learn more about variables, go to crew.com and search for variables. If you need help, you have several ways of getting in contact with me. You can post in the forums at forum.crib.com. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, or on YouTube. And of course, if you found this particular video to be enlightening or just life-changing in how awesome it is, feel free to check out my book, JS 101 JavaScript for Beginners, where I talk about variables and a whole lot of things related to that that you might find pretty interesting. So with that, I will see you all later.